All right, here we go. Salute to Nick Station on this Wednesday evening. Another edition of KFTV Live presented by Underdog Fantasy. Go to underdogfantasy.com or use our code KFTV for an instant deposit match of up to $100. This one is a breaking news edition of KFTV Live. The Knicks are getting stronger and the league is being put on notice because today it was announced that the Block Nest Monster Mitchell Robinson is on the way back. Mitchell Robinson participating in full contact practice. Head coach Tom Thibodeau says the block this monster looks good. And any day now, any game now, will be reinserted into this Knicks rotation. So we are getting back to full strength, man. Let's talk about it. 657-383-1509 or you can hit us up on the KFTV Discord. Hit the like button, hit the share button, subscribe to the channel. If you're a diehard Knicks fan, if you're a diehard basketball fan, this is the place for you, man. Number one show for the fans, by the fans, CP the franchise, Knicks Fan TV. Salute to everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. All right, man. Salute to the chat. Salute to my franchise channel members in here. TMIC. Salute, salute, salute. Great news today, man. Great news. You know, Knicks have been humming all week, 3-0 and on the West Coast trip. And uh, reinforcements on the way, much needed reinforcements. Like I said, Mitchell Robinson on the way back. How do we feel about that, man? I'm excited about it. I'm sure the team is as well. Severely shorthanded since January. I mean, this team just has not been at full strength since January. 60% of the starting unit has been gone. So now Mitchell Robinson, who missed 47 games this year after having ankle surgery, is on the way back. Absolutely. So now he's going to be out against the, the Nuggets. He is going to be out against the Nuggets. So I would have to expect that he's back by Saturday when the Knicks come back into town to play the Nets. All right, so there we go. I, I, I would expect Mitchell Robinson to be back by Saturday. The tip said he went through a full practice. Looks good. He's encouraged. And that is fantastic news for the Knicks, man. Fantastic news. And there it is, the Block Nest Monster on Twitter. Letting the people know we are right there. And gives them the little shush emoji. That's, that, that's, that's, uh, that's Mitch's thing. Throws the emoji in there. We are right there. So just letting the people know he's on the way back. And on the way back to the bench. Because according to Tibbs, Isaiah Hartenstein will remain the starter. And Mitch will come off the bench. And it makes sense. When we talk about what this means for the Knicks, I think you, you, keep, you keep I Hart in that starting lineup. He's killing it right now with this team playing Super well on both ends on both ends of the floor. I love the way that he makes his offense flow. He's a guy that you can run the offense through when he's in the uh, operating out of the post. We saw how well he was passing against Golden State. I mean, iHeart is just locked in. This is the best he's looked as a Nick, and that's saying a lot because he, you know he kept improving, especially since the second part of last year. So, so you keep iHeart out there. You slot Mitch off the bench. And people are saying, well, what about Precious? What about Precious? Well, remember, Precious can play the four or the five. So you're not really skipping a beat here, especially when you have iHeart, who's still on a minutes restriction with the Achilles injury, and you have Mitch coming back after ankle surgery. Now's a good time where guys can just help spell other guys. So Mitch can come in at the, at the, at the five. You still have Precious. You, you, Julius is still not back. So Precious' minutes should be should be fine. And you don't know anything about OG. The report is that OG Ananobi, he's feeling a little bit better. But he's out against Denver. OG's already back here in New York. So I don't think things are going to change that much. But Hartenstein should be happy he gets help. And you get another body for this Knicks front court. And boy, oh boy, the possibilities are endless 
Tom Thibodeau saying today that, look, he's going to be mix, mixing and matching lineups. He's going to be staggering rotations to make sure that the starters are still playing with Mitch, even though iHeart's going to start. So you figure maybe Mitch is one of the first people off the bench. That fortifies your second unit. Imagine all the all all of the the strengths that Mitchell Robinson brings to this team. Imagine that playing against second unit centers. It's going to be abusing people out there if he's back in in good in good conditioning. And that's another thing because remember when when Mitchell Robinson had the foot injury, the foot surgery two years ago, when he came back in the camp. I mean, he was laboring all over the place. Tom Thibodeau said today with the media in his media session that uh, he's been maintaining his similar weight since the injury. So hopefully that builds well for Mitchell Robinson. When you speak to a lot of the former players, a lot of the experts, they say for big men, typically takes about a month to ramp up after missing extended action to get back into, into game shape. So it's good that you bring him Mitchell off the bench. You're not pressed for him at this minute to have him in there. And then he can kind of come along slowly, ramp up. You get three weeks before the playoffs start. And there you go. He Now he's up against second unit centers. Cleaning up Burks and Bogdanovic's bricks, bricks. And being a good security blanket when they get torched on the defensive end. <laughs> Matter of fact, yeah. Leave, leave him right there with that second unit. Because they need help. Right, so he'll clean up their bricks, and uh, and be a nice security blanket out there on the perimeter. But in all seriousness, so I mean the possibilities when you talk about Mitch in a potential lineup with OG on the wing, with Divincenzo, with McBride, boy, let's go. Now we're talking. Now you boys are ready for battle. So. He's going to do nothing more than just fortify an already strong, physical, tough Knicks defense. And if you don't believe me, just ask anybody else around the league. Because every time they go through another team, it's the same, same rhetoric. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to the return. The, the quiz, CP talking bad about Burks. Listen, man, listen. I told you, this isn't the show for the pom-poms. This is the show for reality. Yeah, I, I have a lot of fun with the Burks Hive stuff, but the reality is he's just not doing it for us right now. Yeah, he had one good game against Sacramento. Like I told you guys, one good game. He came through when they needed him. That's about it. But you bring Mitch in there, and he should help. <laughs> he should help especially the way that they're bricking. So, uh, good job there. Lambo Lace says, how is OG Ananobi's MRI? Came back clean. So, no timetable on when he comes back. And so, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see there on OG. On Julius, nothing. Nothing. As a matter of fact, let me pull up this, um, let me pull up this Ian Begley Video from earlier, Ian Begley was on earlier, but he did the putback earlier with our guy, uh, Kazim, friend of the program, and also Brendan Brown. I'm just trying to find this clip of Ian Begley on uh, Julius Randle. And we'll pull that up. But, I mean, it's pretty much nothing, man. It, it, there's no action here on Julius at, the, at this moment. So, you know, my, my theory has been that uh, – you know, you don't, you won't see Julius until the start of the playoffs, but that's just my theory. Here was Ian Begley on the Julius update. This was courtesy of the putback with Ian Begley earlier today. Here, here he is. Well, quickly on Randall, Kaz, because you mentioned Julius. I don't know if he has been cleared for contact yet. I do know that as of that Golden State game, he hadn't been cleared for contact. That's the next big hurdle for Julius Randall. He's been sitting at this spot for a while now where – he can do everything but take full contact and scrimmage five on five. And, you know, some people are just kind of wondering why, why hasn't it happened yet? Obviously that's up to the Nick medical staff. And, you know, we wait here to find out from Tom Thibodeau uh, when Julius Randle does get cleared. That's the big hurdle there. And then, you know, it's probably uh, a week to 10 days until you see him back on the floor, but that's the timetable loosely for Randle. 
All right. So, <clears throat> again, this is Ian, Ian kind of speculating as well, but Julie is still not cleared for five-on-five contact. And it's Ian speculation that when he does get cleared, it'll be probably about a week to 10 days ramp-up time before he's back on the court. There's only three ga- three weeks left in the season. It's three weeks left in the season. For a guy who is going to need off-season surgery, will be susceptible to, to, to dislocating his shoulder again. Three weeks left. I don't know. Knicks are still in the fourth seed. They're still in, the, in a good spot right now. You guys be the judge. To to me, to me, this this seems like day one, game one, playoffs. Rip the band-aid off. You give it a shot. Put him out there. He's probably gonna be taking hella jumpers. <laughs> and, and you see and you see how, how you do from there. Not not as confident, but you guys let me know in the chat, man. What do what do you guys think? What do you guys think? I see a lot of my franchise channel members in the building, man. If you are a franchise channel member, throw an emoji in the chat and let me know that you guys are in here, man. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. CP, the franchise on the solo dolo front. It's happening. The Block Nest Monster is on his way back. And certainly happy to hear that. Uh, Other news, just kind of going around and tapping in on the current events. This was a um, a good article by Fred Katz of The Athletic on uh, Deuce McBride and Deuce McBride's career night in Golden State, man. Deuce McBride going for a career high, 29 points. What an affair for Deuce McBride in San Francisco, man. A two-way effort because not only was he torching the Nets, especially from downtown, but he had to take on the chef. He had to take on the chef, Steph Curry, and try to take him out of his comfort zone, try to take him out of his flow. And for Miles McBride, man, what an, what an outstanding job. When we talk about this Knicks team that has been decimated by injuries, McBride slots right into the starting role, and he delivered in a major way. I mean, damn near played the entire game. Took about a minute and and change left. And in this article by Fred Katz, it's a it's a it's a a great quote by Miles McBride. He didn't even know that Tom Thibodeau was had him shadowing Steph Curry's minutes, minute for minute. So how about that? How about that? A lot of teams save that role for for their lockdown defenders, their most trusted defenders. How about the confidence that the coaches instilled in the kid to say, hey? You are going to track one of the greatest shooters of all time, minute for minute. And then some, because we, we need you to do everything. <laughs> so how about that, man? Out there, shadowing the Steph, shadowing the chef, and not giving him an inch to move. Look at this defense right here. Smothering the chef. All night long. I told you, man, the chef, you know, the chef is a veteran. He's one of the greatest of all time. These guys take nights off. And I thought once Chef seen that McBride was not going to get out of his jersey, he said, oh, you know, listen, y'all got it tonight. Y'all got it tonight. So excellent job by McBride. There's also a nice quote in this article and and uh, where where and Fred does an excellent job on 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 these articles, really pulling out the minutia of the game, and and he talked about McBride's screen navigation, and and was asking McBride about how why he's so good at that. I mean, McBride talked about the fact that at every level of the game, starting with his pops, every person, every coach from high school to Bob Huggins in college to Tibbs in the NBA, get through those screens, get through those screens, do not die on screens. And that is Miles McBride's energy, his intensity on every play. But what I've been saying for a while, and, and I continue to say what is very commendable about Miles McBride, that you just don't see around the league. It's very rare to see a player always ready to play, no matter the situation, no matter the circumstances. He can miss Five games in a row, or maybe he gets a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there. He's starting, he's off the bench. He's always ready. 
He's always ready and always prepared for the moment. That is an incredible trait to have. And, and Isaiah Hartenstein was quoted here in the article as saying uh, this similar thing. It's really impressive, Hartenstein said, just kind of seeing because I've been here for two years, the development, seeing guys like that, maybe at the beginning of the season, not in the rotation, not playing that much. It's impressive. A lot of fans don't get, don't get how hard it is to stay ready in those situations. So that is an excellent trait to have. Because we've had other younger players who we say, hey, they need a rhythm. They need to get, they, they, they need shots. They need the ball, right? Cam and Obi, they're rhythm guys. McBride, it's not like that. He's ready. <laughs> he's ready, you know, from game one, game 10, whatever you need from him, he's doing his job. So that is an absolute great trait to have. Great trait to have. And on the McBride front, you know, one of the knocks on Tibbs when he got here, he can't develop players, he can't develop players, he can't develop players. And when are we going to give Tibbs his credit? When do we give Tom Thibodeau his credit for the job that he's done with this team in the last four years? For a guy who's known to not develop players, look at Deuce McBride, in and out of lineups, in and out of rotations, Career season. Year before that, Emmanuel quickly second in NBA Sixth Man of the Year. Your two stars, Julius Randle, three-time All-Star under Tom Thibodeau. Career years. Jalen Brunson, All-Star, two career years under Tom Thibodeau. Look at Isaiah Hartenstein, a guy who came in not having a reputation for defense, holding it down as a defensive anchor for this team, as well as flashing the offensive glove. Player after player after player is having career seasons under Tom Thibodeau. And while while I am a coach's coach, players play guy, you've got to give him credit. Look how, how well this team has been able to survive being decimated by injuries since January. They could have mailed it in since January. And yet and still, this team is still sitting in the fourth seed of the Eastern Conference, a place where they know quite well because they've been in that area for the last three years. One thing you know about a Tom Thibodeau team is that they're going to continue to play hard. They're going to continue to fight. And when you fit, and when you see that that is their identity, look no further than the head coach. Look no further than the head coach. So give credit to Tibbs, another outstanding job. He's not going to get the NBA Coach of the Year award. That'll probably go to Mark Diagno of the OKC Thunder and well-deserved. But Tom Thibodeau deserves his respect this year, and this Knicks team is certainly playing for their respect, man. So great job by Tibbs. Great job by Tibbs, man. Can't, can't, can't paint the picture any clearer, man. Can't paint it any clearer. So great job there, man. Let me salute to some of my franchise channel members in the building, man. Billy R23, salute Billy. Kobe, young Kobe, what's good, man? Felix Baldomero, I see you in here. Felix, welcome, welcome. Underground Crypto, how you feeling? Underground Crypto came in here and said, is this live? Yes, sir, we, we live and in living color, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. The quiz, thanks for going live, CP. There was nothing on TV. This is Knicks Fan TV, the quiz. This is your TV, man. GQ, salute to GQ. Russell Whiskey in here. We got Brandon Moriello. How you feeling, Brandon? Christopher Blake always in here. Salute to my guys, man. Big Nick Energy in here. Let's go. Salute, salute. We got Courtney J. Flo 174. Salute, man. Anthony 212, I see you in here. Salute, man. Salute. Yeah, so, you know, that that was that on McBride. Just, just a great story uh, along the list of many great stories of this next season. So many, so many good stories on this next season. Obviously, we, we want it to end uh, very well in the playoffs, and time will tell. And as we take a look at the standings and we go around the league, you had, uh, you had Miami Heat with a clutch fourth quarter. They got a clutch qu- fourth quarter performance by Terry Rozier and beat the Cavs. So good news there for the Knicks. They move within a game and a half 
of the Cavs for the third seed. Cavs, remember, they're out without Donovan Mitchell for a couple of games. He just had nasal surgery, and he's recovering from a knee injury. Then you have the Heat now moving to within three games of the Knicks, three and a half games of the Knicks with that win over the Cavs. So, still a dogfight, man. Can't shake Orlando. Orlando only a half game back of the Knicks. Still going to be a dogfight. Where are we going in the first round? Are we, are, we, are we going to Orlando? Where is the KFTV Road Warriors going? Are we going to Orlando? Are we going to Cleveland again? Are we going to that dump again? Are we going to Philly? Are we going to Indiana? Or are we going to Miami? I mean, it, those are your possibilities right now. There's no telling who the Knicks' first-round matchup is at this given moment. And, and the Bucs just got washed by the Celtics, right? I believe that game is over. So the Bucs are coming back to the pack. Bucs just lost. Oh, they didn't get washed. They lost by three. But um, so the Knicks are three games back of the Milwaukee Bucks. Who do you guys want to see in the first round, man? Leave me a comment in the chat. Let me know what you guys think. Because it is, it, it, it is wide open right now. It is wide open. 41 and 27, 68 games in, 14 games left. And every game is going to count, man. Cavs 4 and 6 in their last 10. Yeah, that's the team. <laughs> that's the team I want to see. I would like to see that. But you know, the only way you're going to get that is if is is in a 4-5 spot. That's the only one you, that that's the only way you're going to get that. Which is still possible cuz Cavs are only two games up on Orlando. So, uh certainly possible. C- certainly possible. But yeah, Cle- Cleveland is the team, man. Cleveland is definitely the team. I don't, yeah, I don't I don't I don't uh I don't think the Magic in a series, can beat the Knicks either. I'm, I'm with you guys on that one. Orlando, too young. Second hand, I, I hear you. I, I don't think they're ready. If you want to call us up, call us up on the Discord as well. Back to, back on the McBride front. What's what's very interesting to me as the Knicks look to take on the Denver Nuggets, they're going to take on the champs tomorrow in Denver. Do the Knicks go with the same starting five? What do you guys think about that? I mean, they had so much success with it, but... Is that a product of how they played or just having a good matchup against a smaller Golden State team? You know, Tibbs trying to match size with size. But now you got to go in Denver with one of the biggest, most formidable front courts in the league. In Jokic, in, in Aaron Gordon, and in Michael Porter Jr., who is shooting the cover off the ball, ladies and gentlemen. MPJ shooting 57%. From the field in the month of March, 47% from downtown. He's been absolutely on fire, especially in fourth quarters for the Nuggets. When you see the Nuggets getting into that championship form in the fourth quarter and just out-executing everybody, Michael Porter Jr. is typically in the mix. And so that's what I'm wondering. Are we going to go in there with the same lineup? Are you going to put McBride out there? Moving DiVincenzo to the three, he has to check MPJ. And then, how do you, I mean, you know, yo, <laughs> I'm not even trying to say the J word, the MVP. And then you got Aaron Gordon there. That's a tall order, man. That's a tall order. So, on one end, yeah, yeah, you, you could put McBride out there to chase Jamal Murray around, and that would be great. But, damn, you're going to be woefully undersized. And then how do you tango with this team on the board? This is one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the league. 27-6 and six at home. That's going to be tough for the Knicks, man. Because on the flip side, you put Precious out there and go heart, Precious, I heart, the Knicks become easier to guard again. Now you, then you likely see more two on the ball on Brunson, taking the ball out of his hands. And then you only have two reliable shooters out there in Brunson and, and DiVincenzo. So it's a tricky situation. They're going to be giving up something either way they go. So maybe you just go with McBride and, and just say, hey, 
you know, we take our chances and, and hope for some early misses, similar to what you had against Golden State. And and hopefully you hope you, you play a clean game and give the Nuggets something to think about through three, four quarters. Very interesting dynamic, on, and and uh, and and Tibbs is going to have his work cut out for him against the champs. Not sure how they go there with with this lineup, because either way you're going to be at a disadvantage. But yeah, that boy MPJ, boy Michael Porter Jr. has been putting on a show. Absolutely. So there that is, man. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. He be the franchise here on the solo dolo. Just recapping. The latest Knicks news, the block Ness monster, Mitchell Robinson, is on the way back. How are we feeling about that? Let me know in the comment section, man. Also, remember to support our sponsors, man. And one of our sponsors of the night, you guessed it, Manscaped, the leader in men's grooming tools. Below the waist, above the waist, Manscaped has everything for today's man. So go to manscaped.com and use our code KFTV for 20% off plus free Shipping. Shout out to our guys at Manscaped. You guys got the underdog code before tomorrow's Knicks versus Nuggets game. Go to Underdog Fantasy, use our code KFTV, and play uh, their pick'em games and their daily fantasy draft, man. Use our code KFTV. They give you an instant bonus deposit of up to $100. So it's a great way to get your feet wet into the games, man. Underdog Fantasy. So to our guys at Manscaped as well. Uh, some other news. Tomorrow, we'll be back on tomorrow. The Lunchtime live stream series is back. We always have a lot of interesting guests. I try to bring a lot of interesting guests, Knicks fans, through different walks of life. And tomorrow is no different, man, because tomorrow's guest is going to be my guy, Luis Miguel Echegare. The head analyst for ESPN FC, head soccer analyst for ESPN FC, a diehard Knicks fan. My guy Luis Miguel is going to be joining us for what I would say is a crossover edition of the show, man. So we're going to tap in. Obviously, we're going to talk about Knicks. We're going to get his Knicks fan story, tap in on the latest storylines, get his thoughts on the state of the team, and then get into his world, man, the, the world of soccer, man. Messi and all these guys and all these leagues are back up. I want to get get into his world, his journey, and uh, and so we're gonna do a bit of a crossover, a bit of a crossover episode. Salute. All right, who else we got in the chat here? Michael J. Anyone want free Knicks tickets? No, let's get him out of the chat. No uh, soliciting in the chat, sir. So we're gonna get him out of there. Kobe says statement game. What time tomorrow? It's gonna be uh, twelve o'clock, I think. Twelve o'clock. Typical lunchtime live stream, so salute to everybody on the grind. That'll be at 12 o'clock. So make sure you guys tap into that. We've been uh, trying to schedule this thing for a while now, so we're finally going to get it going. So looking forward to that as well, man. All right, what else we got, man? In other news, you know, Jalen Brunson, we've been talking about uh, our guy JB and the, his marketing machine has been amplified. Remember, go way back when we were debating about the uh, the the All Star game, and we were talking about the fact that you know Brunson he's not getting enough love. Nobody's showing him a, any shine here. Why isn't Brunson getting the respect that he deserves? And you know, one of the things that I pointed to was the fact that you know when you look at him compared to the to the Halliburtons of the world or the Trey Youngs of the world, he's not marketable. He hasn't been out there. Those guys are more out there in how they they promote themselves. The younger kids, the the Gen Zs, the Gen Alphas, they follow those guys based on the highlights, based on their fashion sense. You know, all the other ancillary parts of the game. And Brunson just wasn't there yet. His game was speaking for itself. But you got to have more to it. You know, you got to get a little bit more Hollywood. And so with that being said, man, uh, JB has been doing the damn thing. And shout out to um, one of my PR guys. One of my PR guys was working with TNT, with AT&T on this project. And he sent me this um, this commercial featuring Jalen Brunson, which will be airing during March Madness. And here it is, Jalen Brunson and Sabrina Ionescu. Here it is, March Madness commercial. Jalen Brunson, here we go. Jalen, what are you wearing? What? <laughs> this is my tournament jacket. With AT&T, I can watch at home or on the go. 
Money. What? I'm just like Jalen. It's a vibe. I am a vibe. Connect the madness your way with AT&T 5G and home internet. All right. How about that, huh? I am a vibe, he said. I like that. Got to show some more of your personal side. You had his wife in, in the commercial. You had Sabrina Ionescu making a, uh, a, a cameo. It's a nice one. So, hey, that's, it's all part of it. The CAA machine is working. But, yeah, I went to a sports media conference a couple of days ago, ran into a, uh, a, a old PR contact, and, and he sent me the video. So I shared it, shared it with you guys, and, and that will be airing during the NCAA tournament. So shout out to Captain Clutch on that. And, and as we keep going around the media, man, he's getting his respect. Here's Draymond Green on the, the Warriors' approach to Jalen Brunson and why he's just been an absolute beast this season. Here's, here's uh, Draymond Green on the Draymond Green show. I actually prefer to defend him more in ISO than a pick and roll. He's so crafty, man. You start adding adding a screen of a pick and roll with Jalen Brunson, and he's coming downhill, and he's got all the pivots and side steps and drawing fouls, and he uses his body great. He finishes well. Uh, Jalen Brunson is a three level scorer. He can finish at the rim. He can finish in the mid range. He got a floater. He got a three. He got a pull up. Like he score at all levels. And so, me personally, I'd rather guard him one on one than guard him in a pick and roll. Guard him in a pick and roll is tough. Almost impossible. And, like, you're blitzing. But the thing is with most guys, when you blitz them, they get sped up. They get off the ball. He never gets sped up. He plays at his own place. So, like, even if you blitz, like, he's not really trying to go somewhere. He's just going to wait till the floor opens up, and then he's going to make his move. Interestingly enough, uh, it it works every night. And he is playing at an all-NBA level. I actually. All right. So, that was Draymond Green, courtesy of the Draymond Green Show. He said he'd rather guard him in isolation, but there was only one problem, guys. Jalen Brunson still cooked the Warriors for 34 points on 12 of 25 shooting. So, it didn't work. <laughs> so, I, I think the, the, the Warriors got to gotta revisit some of their defensive schemes. You know, what Draymond say about, about, uh, about Jalen Brown? Yeah, we'll give him the three, whatever. <laughs> so... So, yeah, we, we got to work on that because uh certainly didn't work against Jalen Brunson. But you know what? In fairness to him, it doesn't work with most teams because Captain Clutch is just that nice. And one thing that I do agree with Jamon Green is that, yeah, you can't speed him up. Even when you put two on the ball, whether you're going to blitz him, you're going to trap him, he's patient, he's diligent, he takes his time, and he will still pick you apart. Still pick you apart. So that's the thing with Captain Clutch, man. Only thing now is is as they go into the playoffs, finding the optimal lineups and rotations that gives you the best balance of offense and defense that will allow him to be great. We don't want the same mistake as the Miami series, and this is why I like like we got to get back to full strength because with the addition of DiVincenzo, with Ananobi, the way Josh Hart is playing, I think you're going to see a different story. This is why part of the reason why this team is so dangerous come playoff time. Number 30 is the biggest wild card in the X Factor. 30, we need you. All right, so that was Draymond Green on the Jalen Brunson Flowers Tour. But wait, there's more. We got some more people coming through to dish on JB. How about the Udonis Haslam show? UD, the OG. Talking about Boogeyman Brunson, man. He's shook. Uh, JB, man, let's listen to you, Donis Haslam. Hear what he had to say. Here we go. What's this guy? Uh, I think Brunson. Is it Brunson? Brunson? Yeah. Man, bro, he give me nightmares. Love, I'm a point guard, too, so I, I love his game. Man, bro. give me nightmares, man. Man, he different, bro. I, can't, I don't know. He came out of nowhere, too, though, man. Man, I'm the like, man got all the moves. Yeah. All the moves. What's this guy? Uh, I think Brunson. Yeah. Is it Brunson? Brunson? I'm not sure who my man with the dreads is, but, uh, yeah, he got all the moves. All the moves. It's Arsenal is unlimited. So that was Udonis Haslam on, on his show. The OGs showing Brunson some love. So this is going to continue, man. The Brunson Flowers Tour is going to continue. He's getting his flowers. He's doing the commercials. The respect is coming. Last year wasn't there. The respect is coming, and 
it's only going to continue to elevate his brand. I've been saying it since he was selected to the USA team. He played in the World Cup, elevating his brand. He's, he's uh, elevating his profile around the league with coaches and players. And now with the casual fans, that's the next step, is getting it with the casual fans. And the way that they get that is through, first off, the number one show for the fans by the fans, Knicks Fan TV, but also the mainstream media. That is what they're there for. Those are the masters that they serve. The ESPNs of the world, the TNTs, the Fox Sports, that is when, uh, you know, the, the, the brand, the profile is, is going to elevate. That is that. Right, so so there it is, man. And yeah, that that's the story, guys. Quick, rapid fire live. Just wanted to tap in, share the news on Mitchell Robinson. Get your guys' take on it. Deuce McBride, get you give me your takes on it. Send me something in the comment section. And uh, the flowers tour for Jalen Brunson. Knicks back in action tomorrow night against the champs, nine o'clock. We will have Knicks play-by-play live, hosted by JD Sports Talk, tomorrow night. We will have Knicks post-game live tomorrow night. And remember, our guest on the lunchtime live stream tomorrow, my guy, Luis Miguel Echegare, man. So Knicks Fan TV will be on triple header status on Thursday. Make sure to tap in, hit that like button, hit the share button, subscribe to the channel. Don't miss it. We back, baby. And we are in the final stretch. Three weeks left. People coming back. Reinforcements coming back. KFTV, we're working in the background. We got so much going on. So much in the work. So much being planned as we ramp up for playoff time, man. This is the best time of year. The weather's changing. Weather's getting better. This is the best time of year, man. So super excited about it. Definitely appreciate y'all for tapping in. And uh, you know what I'm about to do right now? I'm about to go watch X-Men 97. That is what everybody is talking about. But my, my boyhood cartoon is back. And I'm about to go sit down, tap in, and go catch up on the first two episodes, man. I'm itching, man. When the, when the previews came out, I was super excited about it. And uh, I, I can't wait to see what this remix is going to look like, man. X-Men 97. If you guys have seen it already, leave me some comments in the chat. I'm ready to go get it in, man. So uh, remember, this show's available in audio podcast format. No reason to miss it. You can catch us on all major podcast platforms. If you did miss it, so to the replay gang, man, catch it up. Salute to all my, my Uber drivers, my truck drivers, everybody at the MTA, man. If you guys are working on the late night shift, salute to you guys as well. And uh, remember to salute our sponsors, man. Underdogfantasy.com. Use our code KFTV for an instant deposit match of up to $100. Also, Manscaped.com. Promo code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. Shout out to Ginger Hales Lemonade as well. The household name in Ginger Lemonade. Go to GingerHales.com. Use our code KFTV for 15% off your first order. Omar Omar says X-Men 97 is fire, bro. Yeah, I'm about to go get it in right now. So I'll see y'all tomorrow. Keep it locked. Like, share, subscribe. Knicks Nation, all love, man. Franchise, we out of here. Peace. Lex from BX, peace.